Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here, and in my last video I was working on uh, the bearings on the counter shaft, and I said that I would uh, put out another video with uh, some of the stuff that uh, I've recently acquired for the lathe. So uh, the first thing I have here is a uh, four jaw chuck and a, and a back plate. Now the back plate, um, the step on it will have to be turned down uh, for the register, or you know, to register in the back of the uh, four jaw chuck. So uh, you know, I've always understood that if you can only afford one chuck, get a four jaw and, and uh, um, you can work that way. So I have that and um, <clears throat> um, I don't have a whole lot of experience in turning and you know I have to turn this, I have to turn this step down. So uh, that's, that's one thing that I got to do. And uh, I'm, we'll talk about the, that here or I, I'll ask a couple questions about that here in a little bit, uh, in a moment or two. So, um, let me put the next thing that I got for the lathe up here and, and I'll come right back. Okay, the next thing I have here is a quick change tool post uh, that I bought for the lathe and I'd like to thank uh, Art Eckstein for pointing out a, a bit of a cheaper link to buy this stuff. And by the way, I should, uh, I should probably give my wife credit for uh, buying the chuck and uh, the back plate for me for Father's Day. So, uh, she's really uh, pretty good to me and, and uh, tolerates all my insane crap going on but anyway uh, so what I bought was this uh, this Bostar uh, AXA tool post uh, it's a wedge type tool post uh, I, granted I know it's Chinese made but uh, I just cannot afford um, uh, you know the Aloris and some of these other high dollar tool posts and when I bought it it came with uh, a cutoff tool holder a uh, boring bar holder a regular uh, um, uh, up to a half inch tool. It's got, a, it's got a, a little V down there in the base of it so you can put a round bar in there if you had to. Uh, a knurling, combination knurling, bump knurler, and uh, a tool bit holder. Um, although everybody tells me that, or the way I understand it is that uh, bump knurling is not the best way to go. Um, also a regular um, half inch, up to half inch uh, uh, tool bit holder. And then there's some extra large. These will hold, I think, up to a 5 8 inch, and they have a little V groove in the bottom. So the stuff you see right here is what I ordered, and then I went ahead and ordered a couple of extra regular, um, if I can get that in frame, uh, tool holders. So that should be that should be enough to get me started. Now the big question is, uh, uh, you know, what tooling to put in there. So um, so let me show you what I got for that, and I'll be right back. Oh, one thing that I wanted to mention about this is that uh, now on my, um, I have the uh, lantern style uh, tool post that uh, I found. And one thing that I do want to point out is on the, uh, my compound, let me pull this off, um, my compound, um, this is below the this this part of the of the tool holder is below the casting so uh, now I've seen uh, some people will mill this off or back um, so that the block will fit up there I mean as of right now uh, you see I wouldn't be able to turn even if I took took this off you know I wouldn't be able to turn uh, or, or the other option is I have um, you know put a spacer here to bring me up the top above the casting so that I can actually turn uh, the quick change tool uh, block, you know, the the holder part. So um, if you have suggestions on that, um, um, what works for you and or what ha or, you know what do you think will work best, um, I would appreciate it. So you know, like I said, I'm a I'm a rank newbie when it comes to uh, uh, machine work. I'm a computer geek. Um, I'm really interested in learning and I'm, I'm trying to learn. I've, I've, I have to send out a huge thanks there to uh, Mr. Lyle Peterson, Mr. Pete 222. Uh, goes by Tubal Cane. Um, I tell you what, I wish I would have had a shop teacher like that when I was in high school. I would have, I probably would have uh, stuck with it instead of doing some of the things that I've done uh, going on, on, on an errant path, different errant paths in my life. But anyway, uh, so let's get to, uh, let's get to the tooling part. So, be right back. 
Okay, I'm back, and uh, what I have here is a uh, selection of uh, high-speed uh, steel blanks um, and uh, carbide tool bits. Uh, there's quite a few still in that box there. I just didn't want to dig them all out. And oh, a huge thanks to my friend Gary Johnson for uh, uh, donating some tooling to me. He's uh, he's a heck of a guy. I met him when our kids were in band together, and we done some ran the band boosters together, and and uh, he's been very supportive and very kind to me. Uh, and then in addition to this, um, Gary was kind enough to give me uh, a boring bar as well. And I think I have it yeah, right here. So um, he gave me a nice nice boring bar uh, to go with the tooling. So I, I really, really, really appreciate that. So uh, Gary, I don't know if you ever see this video or not, but uh, hey brother, uh, thank you man. Thank you uh, so very much. I, I appreciate it. And then uh, I have a few other odd and ends that I've bought for the lathe and, and uh, I'll cover them now. And then uh, talk a little bit about where I'm at with it. So, be right back. Okay, and finally, um, I've bought a, uh, a number th three to two Morse taper sleeve for the headstock. I bought a uh, uh, carbide tipped uh, uh, number two Morse taper dead center for the headstock. I've bought a uh, live center uh, for the tail stock and uh, I've bought a, uh, a half inch Jacobs chuck uh, uh, which is a, this one's a J33 um, uh, taper and then I bought a Morse taper 2 to J33 I haven't haven't seen that in there yet so um, so anyway that's that's the uh, tooling other than um, uh, I have if I can get it there in frame, you see that there's a, a drive plate or a face plate. I did buy this for the lathe uh, too, so that's that's kind of where I'm at with uh, tooling. And then, uh, so now I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, where I'm at with the lathe, um, what needs to be fixed, and maybe get some suggestion from you guys. So, um, I'll be right back. Okay. So I found this uh, lathe on Craigslist, and look, I live out in Podunk, Tennessee, right? Very rural area, and there's not a lot of these uh, this kind of stuff to find around here. Um, but uh, I, it was really cheap, okay? Uh, but it had no tooling, and uh, uh, when I got it, um, um, it was configured in a way that I've never really seen a lathe configured. So I'm going to ask some questions. So, um, when I got the lathe, um, let me move this gib here, uh, it had this, it had this T-slotted uh, cross slide on it, it's fairly heavy casting, it's got T-slots on the sides, or on the side, and then in the top, and, and then uh, one in the back, if I remember right, I think this went this way, and, and that, uh, that nut wasn't attached in there, so. So uh, that's that's what was there, and then there was a pretty heavy-looking uh, tool post I got here somewhere. Uh, when I come across it, I'll show it to you. That was mounted to the back. So what I done was um, I got on uh, uh, Feebay, as uh, Mr. Pete likes to call it, and I found a regular uh, cross slide compound and then the, t the tool rest and, and that so so that I can get a regular tool up here and then of course I found a uh, it didn't have a lantern tool post with it so I, I found this uh, lantern uh, tool post and wrench on eBay um, and uh, just because mostly I, I wanted one but I think in the long term I'd be better off with just a, uh, a regular um, quick change tool post so that's why I bought that and if I look back here somewhere, I don't know where it's at right now. I'll have to have to find it. Had a real heavy block um, a tool post that sit in the back of this slide here. That uh, tell you what, hang on. Let me uh, let me find that because I, I want to show that to you, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the tool post that was uh, mounted in the uh, back of uh, this T-slot on the back of the lathe like it was uh, being used maybe uh, with the height, center height adjusted 
for a cutoff tool from the back or something. I'm not real sure. So, um, can somebody tell me more about this cross slide uh, and, and tool post to maybe give me an idea a little more about what this lathe was about? Okay. So I've went through and I've, um, as you know, I've I've cleaned up the headstock and the counter shaft. Uh, I still want to. Um, do a little bit more work to it before I actually fire it up and try to use it. I just want to make sure I clean out the reversing uh, box and just open it up, make sure it looks good. Um, and if I come over here, the uh, the compound slide and the cross slide have been cleaned out real well. I uh, I want to clean out uh, the apron and make sure there's no uh, chips and dried grease in there. And then. Um, I need some parts. Maybe you guys can help me, or is this something I should try to fabricate? Uh, I have a way wipe back here on the back left, and I have a way wipe over here on the front right, but I'm missing the one on the front left and the back right. So I need uh, some sort of uh, way wipers there. So I, I don't know if you can buy the little metal piece or not. I'm not really seeing them. Is that something I should try to fabricate from a piece of metal, or anybody got any ideas there? Um, and then. Lastly, uh, I want to talk about the uh, tailstock a little bit. Now, the tailstock was missing was missing the clamp. But I've got a clamp uh, for the tail tailstock now, and it's good. Um, the only other thing was that uh, the set screw that uh, sits up in this little channel right here uh, was broken. So I got it out, but I, I need to. I still need to make a a dog screw or set screw or something to go up in there with a little lock washer and then the only other thing is that uh, I have the um, uh, the quill lock these are the only parts that I have to it and what I have are um, the actual quill lock parts right and the handle okay so I need to uh, make a square headed quarter 20 bolt here and I think Mr. Pete was kind enough to send me some dimensions and then there's a washer on top it's got a little bit of a bevel cut on it uh, that's supposed to be you know that's made out of hardened uh, metal so my question there is could I um, get like a grade 8 boat bolt I've seen uh, uh, Rich from uh, making something from nothing do this uh, anneal that bolt, bolt and then uh, you know, uh, fabricate my washer and then uh, heat it to red hot and then quench it uh, and then uh, temper it back a little bit. Will that work or do I need to find a piece of tool steel for that? So, uh, but anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the other, the only, the last thing um, that uh, I have to mention here is that uh, the, well, I tell you what, let me reposition the. Uh, camera and I'll just show you. Okay so I'm over here at the end of the lathe where the uh, gear train goes um, where it sits on the banjo. Of course I have the banjo disengaged uh, uh, from from the headstock but the gears that I, that's all the gears that I have. I don't have change gears for the lathe and obviously it's not a quick change uh, um, uh, lathe so I need to uh, I need to get some gears so I can't even really uh, run it in fine feed at, at the moment um, uh, with with uh, the gear train, so I, I'm looking for gears uh, or some options for some gears. Uh, look, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, this is a this is a hobby for me, and uh, I got uh, three kids in college, so I don't have a lot to spend on it. So I'm looking uh, uh, to do this um, to get going as cheap as I can. So anyway, uh, so this video doesn't uh, go on and on and on and on. That's kind of where I'm at, and then my my game plan I think for now is uh, I will um, clean up the uh, reversing lever and check out the uh, saddle and the apron, and at that point I think that I can uh, start um, maybe making some chips. Now having not made any real chips before, other than on my little six inch. Uh, Craftsman Dunlap lathe, which is, um, well, we won't even go there. Um, you know, I need to, uh, I need to figure out a way to make, uh, the, the nut, the T nut, uh, for my quick change tool post in a spacer so that I can use it. And I need to, uh, turn the, uh, the register, uh, on the back plate, uh, so that it fits my four jaw chuck. Okay. 
um, but I, I feel like I want to do some practice before I really attempt that stuff. So I think what I want to do is uh, use some of the uh, videos that I've seen on YouTube from uh, um, Mr. Pete and uh, maybe uh, Tom um, uh, uh, Ox Tool guy and then uh, there's a couple of other ones that have shown some pretty good, I can't remember off the top of my head, on grinding some tools and maybe I'll cut a right hand tool and and uh, cast a piece of aluminum or something and just kind of bolt to this face plate and and just see if I can make some chips, you know, you know, uh, do some facing and, and some plane turning and that, and that sort of thing uh, to, to see if I can turn to a diameter because that's that's important to me before I uh, mess up a, uh, what is, ex to me, an expensive uh, back plate for the chuck. So anyway, uh, that's what I got uh, so far and um, when I start, uh, when I start uh, taking the uh, uh, reversing uh, uh, gear apart, you know, the box apart, um, then I'll come in and, and show what I've done with that and what I learned about that. So uh, until then, um, hey, thank you everybody for your help. I, I appreciate it uh, more than you ever know. Um, thanks for your advice. Um, Mr. Mr. Pete uh, and Art, uh, thank you very much for your advice and your help. And John, um, uh, I mean Gary, I'm sorry. Gary, thank you so much for the uh, for the uh, uh, the the cutting bits uh, and the high speed stool uh, tool steel. So I, I appreciate that. So other than that, um, you guys have a blessed day.